Hi, it's the 6th of October 2020 here in the UK. I just thought I'd do a quick update on the Coronavirus Act 2020. Um, I received a letter back from Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House. Um, so I will go through that shortly, but I just wanted to go through what happened on, on the day of the um, hearing regarding the Coronavirus Act 2020. It was actually voted on the day to keep the Act uh, the Coronavirus Act is up for review every six months and it's in place for, for, for two and a half years and it's a document that is taking away all our rights uh, and freedoms at the moment. Now, 330 MPs voted to keep the Act in place. From that, um, I'm just going to go through how many people couldn't be bothered to vote because a total of 281 um, MPs didn't even bother turning up to vote. They thought it wasn't uh, important. Um, so I'm just going to go through them. So there were 23 from the Conservative Party. Labour, 194. 194 Labour MPs couldn't be bothered to vote on something so important that is taking away our freedoms and rights. Bankrupting the country, they couldn't even be bothered to vote. I wonder why we're paying them. Democratic Union Unionists, 8, Independent, 3, Plaid Cumbria, 3, SNP, 48, Social Democratic Party, 2. Now, the ones that did vote, uh, who still believe in democracy, I'm going to read their names out because, you know, uh, just to thank them really for voting against the Coronavirus Act. Uh, and that was uh, for Labour, there was Rebecca Long-Bailey, Dawn Butler, Keevan Jones, Graham Stringer, John Speller and Derek Twigg. For the Conservative Party, uh, Peter Bone, Philip Davies, Esther McVie, Philip Hollabone, Desmond Swain, Charles Walker and William Ragg. For the Lib Dems, um, Ed Davy, Tim Farron, Daisy Cooper, Weira Hobhouse, Christine Jardine, Layla Moran, Monora Wilson, Jamie Stone, Sarah Olney, and for the Greens, Carolyn Lucas, and for Alliance, Stephen Ferry. So yeah, a big thank you for you guys for, vo for voting against the Coronavirus Act and for standing up for democracy. I actually sent a letter to uh, Lindsay Hoyle and this is the letter I wrote and I'll read back the response and the response was actually read back on the day that the um, Coronavirus Act was up for review and that was on the 30th of September. So I wrote, I am very concerned, uh, so I wrote, Dear Lindsay Hoyle, I'm a very concerned member of the public and I'm writing to you backed by Save Our Rights to urge you to allow Sir Graham Brady MPs amendments to be heard tomorrow. While I understand that the motion set to be heard tomorrow on the Coronavirus Act is unusual in its form as it is, I do not believe this should mean the amendment should not or could not be added to it. Graham Brady MP Elat Amili calling for democracy to be restored. Throughout this pandemic, far too many powers have been granted to individual MPs and the fact that over 230 statutory instruments have been made is alarming. I am very concerned that these laws are being passed with no scrutiny of the House and no impact assessment. For example, Matt Hancock passed a statutory instruments to mandate masks in shops late one Sunday evening and fail to recognise that there is no evidence of transitional transmission and the fact it will cause a rise in disability hate crimes and therefore disproportionately disadvantaging one of the most vulnerable groups of society. This method of passing laws cannot continue. As the Speaker of the House, it is your job to maintain a democracy in this country and that is that this amendment would do so much again that Sorry, I'm just going to read that again. As a Speaker of the House, it is your job to maintain democracy in this country and that is what this amendment would do. So once again, I urge you to let it be heard and do the right thing by the British public. 
So that's the letter I sent. And this is what I received back today. So, um, yeah, I thought it was nice that I got a response. Um, I have um, put this on my Facebook page for everybody to read, but I'm just going to read this out um, for anybody who's not heard it. Uh, so this was the Mr. Speaker. This was his... Um, what he read on the 30th of September, what, what he spoke out. So I wish to make a statement about this House scrutiny of delegated powers during the pandemic. And on this section of amendments to the motion relating to the Coronavirus Act 2020 later today. The way in which the government have exercised their powers to make secondary legislation during this crisis has been totally unsatisfactory all too often Important statutory instruments have been published a matter of hours before they come into force and some explanation why important measures have come into effect before they can be laid before this house has been unconvincing. This shows a total disregard for the house. The government must make greater efforts to prepare measures more quickly so that this house can debate and decide upon the most significant measures at the earliest possible point. The use of made affirmative statutory instruments under the urgency procedure give rise to particular concern. I will give very sympathetic consideration to applications for urgent questions or emergency debate in such cases, requiring ministers to come to the dispatch box to justify the use of such powers. I hope that all honourable members will have a chance to express their views through substantive and meanable motion on scrutiny of delegated powers or on the operation of the Coronavirus Act 2020 or both. I turn now to the motion to be considered later today, which invites the House to make a narrow binary choice as to whether the temporary provision of the Coronavirus Act 2020 should or should not expire. Unfortunately, as it is only a 90 minute debate, a 90 minute de debate? How can you discuss the Coronavirus Act that in, in 90 minutes? Sorry. Uh, so a 90 minute debate as a proceeding under an act using standard order number 16. I am disappointed that I cannot give additional time to discuss the issues. I know some members will be disappointed. When I became speaker, I made it clear that I would take decisions on matters relating to procedures guided by professional advice. I have concluded on the basis of advice that I have received that any amendment to the motion before the House risks giving rise to uncertainty about the decision the House has taken. This then risks decisions that are rightly the responsibility of Parliament ultimately being determined by the courts. Lack of clarity in such important matters risk undermining the rule of law. I have therefore decided not to select any of the amendments to this motion. As I hope my earlier comments show, I have not taken this decision lightly. I am looking to the government to remedy a, situ a, su a situation I regard as completely unsatisfactory. I now look to the government to rebuild the trust with this house and now treat and not treat it with the contempt they have shown. So this it so from that the government have said they will try and try and run by the house any more statutory instruments they implement and that word try being the operative word. So there we are. There we are. There as it stands today with the Coronavirus Act.